Hello and welcome to Social Church. We're really excited to be recording a testimony of Paul Shirley today. Paul has been involved in planting a church through Grace Advance and serves as the first pastor of Grace Community Church in Wilmington. Paul has written multiple books and is a really well respected preacher. I can't wait to hear this. Over to you, Paul. My name is Paul Shirley and this is my testimony. I live in Wilmington, Delaware on the east coast of the United States and I'm a Christian. And I want to tell you how I became a Christian and why I have never regretted it for a single moment in my life. I was not always a Christian, like all men. I was born into sin and enslaved by my sin. I had no power over it. I couldn't control it. I couldn't stop it. Uh, Sin had mastery over me. I was a slave to sin. And on top of being a slave to sin, I was also a hypocrite about it. I had no power over sin, but I acted like I had power and control over my life. My life was out of control. Like a hypocrite, I acted like I was the ruler of the entire world. In other words, I was a self-righteous person. I was trusting in my own power. I thought I could produce my own righteousness. I thought that I deserved the praise of man and God, but really I was just pridefully living for myself as a rebel to Christ. Really, even better than a description of all the behaviors and all the things that were going on in my heart when I was an unbeliever is the description that Ephesians chapter 4 verses 17 through 19 give of what's going on in the heart of an unbeliever. There the Apostle Paul talks about the unbelieving heart. And he says that Christians must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. And this is a perfect description of what I was and what my life looked like apart from Christ. Now, Paul talks about the futility of their minds. My mind was totally focused on vain, unimportant, futile things all the time. I only wanted to think about vanity because I didn't want to think about eternal realities. The fact of the matter is, deep down, I knew that Every single human being at some point will die and have to stand before God. But I so hated that truth that I filled my life with all kinds of vain pursuits so that I would never have to think about God or eternal matters. Really, we see this all around the world, by the way. This is why things like alcohol addiction and drug addiction are so rampant. They're futility enhancers. They they allow an unbelieving heart to distract themselves to death and never think about God. And, of course, in my own way, that's what I was trying to do. And and not only was I thinking about futile things, but Paul also talks about how unbelievers are darkened in their understanding. That was totally me. In other words, it wasn't just what I was thinking about. It was even how I thought. I was able to reason to justify my sin. I was able to reason in such a way that would make me always be the hero and always look good. My, my reasoning process was completely darkened. The lights were out. I had no truth that I could process. And because of that, as Paul said, I was also alienated from the life of God. I, I had no relationship with God. I had no... Uh, personal saving knowledge of who God was and what he had done for me. I didn't recognize him, even as the creator of the world. I didn't want to submit to him in any of these things. In fact, just as Paul said, I had hardened my heart to God. And the reason why my heart was hardened to God is very simple. I didn't want to submit to God. I knew that if I recognized God as the creator of the universe, that I would have to submit my life to him. And I didn't want that. So instead, I hardened my heart to God. I alienated my life from God. And really, all of this was so that I could pursue my own lustful desires. 
In fact, verse 19 of Ephesians 4 says that same thing. So they have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. That was me. My God was my lust. I wanted what I wanted when I wanted it. Uh, the gratification of my desires, that, that was my Lord. That was my master. And I knew that if I recognized who God is, if I recognized Jesus as Lord, that I would have to leave the pursuit of my own desires and the pursuit of my own lusts behind. And I didn't want to do that. And as a result, I was enslaved to sin. There was no joy. There was no peace. I could never do enough to gratify my desires. I could never please my, my sensual desires. And as a result, even though because I was a hypocrite on the outside, it would have looked fine. On the inside, in my inner man, in my soul, I, I was just absolutely torn to pieces with a lack of peace and a lack of joy. And that's who I was. And I had no power whatsoever to change that. But thankfully, in, in the midst of my sin, in the midst of rejecting God, in the midst of refusing to submit to God, God in his love and by his grace intervened into my life in a powerful way in order to bring me to a saving knowledge of Christ. And again, even better than describing some of the details uh, of exactly how I came to Christ, which are really pretty simple. Uh, I heard the gospel. I had heard the gospel many times before, but I had always hardened my heart to it. But, but eventually, I heard the gospel, and by God's grace, I received the message of the gospel for the salvation of my soul. And, and, and the reason why it was different when I heard it this time is because of what Paul says in Ephesians 4, verse 20. Paul goes on to say, in verses 20 to 24, but it, that is not the way that you learned Christ. I had heard about Christ before, but I had never learned Christ. But then verse 21 says, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt the deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. That's what happened to me on that day. God intervened by his grace, and he gave me the capacity to finally learn and know who Christ is. To see Christ in his person and in his work, to see his perfect character, if you don't know Christ, I would just encourage you to look into Christ because there's no one who is greater than him. When you know Christ, you know his perfections. You know that he's truly God and he's truly man. You know that he possesses all the glory and grace and wisdom of God, and yet he came into this world and became a man. And even in his human life, he lived a truly perfect life, always loving God, always loving others. At the same time, when you know Christ, you also know that his work for sinners is perfect as well. He didn't just live a perfect life, but he also died a perfect death on the cross. The wages of sin is death, and he came to save sinners, so he had to die. When you learn Christ, you see that his work is perfect and sufficient to save you. And by God's grace, I was given the capacity to see that. I was also given the capacity to receive the truth. Before, I had hardened my heart to the truth, but because of the Spirit's work in my heart, I was able to receive the truth, specifically the truth of the gospel. I remember one time talking to somebody about the gospel, and I said, do you know what the gospel is? And they said, sure. You just be a good person, go to church enough, and you get to go to heaven. Well, I responded, and I would respond the same to anyone who might hear this. That's not the gospel at all. What if I told you the gospel is way better than that? What if I told you that the gospel is that you don't have to do anything to earn heaven. You simply have to believe in Christ because he has done everything that's necessary to earn heaven. That's the truth of the gospel. The truth of the gospel is that Christ has accomplished salvation for us. So we must simply believe in Jesus to be saved. That was a truth that I have heard so many times before. 
but it was only when the Lord gave me the capacity to receive this truth did I receive it. And, and by the way, when I had the capacity to receive this truth, God also gave me the capacity to respond to this truth, specifically by repenting of my former way of life and believing as Christ in Christ as Lord and Savior. This is the work of grace that God did in my life. This is how I was saved. This is how I became a Christian. This is my testimony, and this can be anyone's testimony as well. Earlier in the book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which he prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You see, because of God's grace, I'm a Christian whose sins have been forgiven and whose life has been completely changed. It was not me who did this, but it was Christ in me. And I can tell you this, I have never for a moment regretted following Christ. He has forgiven my sins. He has provided me with grace. He has loved me every step of the way. He cares for me. His mercies are new every morning, and His grace is sufficient in everything that I face. He has taken care of me and sustained me, and I know that this is what He will do for all of eternity. And my prayer is not only that someone might hear my testimony today, but someone might hear my testimony and look to Christ as their Savior, because I know, just like I have never regretted it, I know that they will never regret following Jesus. Paul, that's brilliant. Thank you so much. If you would like to share your testimony on Social Church, we would love to hear from you. Just contact us via our website on www.wearesocialchurch.com or you can contact us on any of our social media channels. Thanks a lot for listening today. Bye for now.